concept behind this project was to try and capture runoff from the street and use an existing green park space to um, manage that water. And this is an area of combined sewer, so again, the whole goal was to utilize this site to try and delay stormwater entry the system. And from a landscape architect's perspective, this was also a fun site because it was counterintuitive to do in a rain garden because the site is sloped. It continues to slope to that corner. So we were trying to find in the park a zone that would be flat in order to capture water and allow it to infiltrate. So this neighborhood park also had been used for many uh, music festivals and historically the stage was at the top side of the site and the audience was on the low side of the site. So we knew we were going to have to do some earthwork and some grading to accommodate the rain garden within the site. So it allowed this opportunity to really kind of think holistically about the site and sort of play around with some of the elements. So we ended up incorporating into the Stormwater Micro project a stage, which is what you see right here, that gets used and is much loved by the neighborhood. But the system itself, it's again capturing water from 3rd Street, so the 3rd Street is to our, or behind you. Um, where the bus is, it is sitting over an existing inlet in the street, and then uphill of that inlet we installed a new inlet. We then put a trans uh, conveyance pipe underneath the sidewalk into the Gabion basket, which is that cobble wire basket over there next to the orange snow fence. And initially in the design concept, the water was in a perforated pipe within that basket. So the concept was that it would come through the conveyance pipe in a distribution pipe and then just seep into the landscape. We had a grass swale that ran from the Gabion basket down to this rain garden. And then, so that was the initial concept. However, what we found out was between the Gabion basket and the rain garden, there was too much infiltration and water wasn't reaching the rain garden as intended. Which historically, or typically in summer management, that's great because the site's been used to infiltrate the water. But during this project, the neighborhood, the community decided they wanted to take it to the next level. So they um, worked with us and the contractor to try and incorporate cisterns into the system itself. So the concept was that the rain garden would capture the water and direct that water into cisterns. Those systems would then be used to water new plantings, to water the rain garden, just general park use. So when the water wasn't reaching the rain garden, and we had constructed these 6,000 gallon cisterns, which are right here, that was a problem. So, a big problem. So, we'll talk about the phase two, which is the granite cobble runnel that you'll see over there. But the basic concept behind that runnel was we needed to create a paved or a non-pervious connection between the distribution or the conveyance pipe and the rain garden. So when water has gone down through the runnel or the old grass whale into the rain garden, there's 12 inches of soil and then 12 inches of stone. And the system itself is lined. So this site, because of its history, it was a tannery. There are small sinkholes that were historically associated with this site. So we didn't want to direct a large, a large amount of water into a small area in case we except, you know, made that situation even worse. So it is lined. So the whole rain garden, as defined by the cobble edging, it's a lined system. So the rain comes into the garden, infiltrates through the soil, into the stone storage bed. From there it gets conveyed to the cisterns. When the cisterns are full and the storage capacity of the rain garden is full, then that's when it overflows back into the storm sewer system. So that's the basic concept behind the system. And um, we can go and take a look at the different elements. Does anyone have any questions? Pardon? So there is a, a pipe that is connects to the stone storage beneath the soil in the rain garden that then goes back here and the cisterns are buried. I probably like an eight inch. I think it's like an eight inch pipe. Pump water out of the cisterns for irrigation. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about the mechanisms of the cisterns themselves and the pumping and how you utilize them? Uh, yeah, um, there's a pipe under the ground. I didn't have to build it myself. There's two hose bibs here and here, and we have an electrical system. We needed the electrical system anyway for the stage, so it was easy to just jack into it the pump that runs the hose, runs the water to the hose bibs. What more is there to say? Okay. The water comes out. It just mm -hmm. turn it on. It gets triggered when we turn it on. Yeah. And initially, from a, um, from a planting perspective, the initial concept for this rain garden had been just like tall panicum grasses. So the idea was you'd have this mown lawn, you'd have the cobble edge, which defined the liner. And again, the cobble edge is there so that when the friends of the park are doing plant work, it's like, careful where you dig, basically, because there's a liner down here, we don't want to disturb that. Um, but initially, it was a panicum grass, it was to be this tall, wavy grass. 
However, initially after installing, there was lots of rain events and seed floated and bad seed got in and there was a few accidental mowings in the process. So it did not necessarily succeed. So we're now changing over into a more traditional kind of garden landscape. And um, we're having fun with it. You know, it's, it's one of these situations where this rain garden, I think, is predominantly dry. It is. So, and we're finding a lot in our work that we design these rain gardens, but they're actually more like dry gardens because there's a small soil profile on top of stones. So when it's not wet, it's really dry. And when it is wet here, it seems to pretty much go to the cistern pretty quickly. So our plant palette is kind of evolving as we have more and more opportunity to play around with different plant material. It's really just capturing the 